Okay, so this is looking at the Maura Dooley poem, Letters from Yorkshire. In February, digging his garden, planting potatoes, he saw the first lapwings return and came indoors to write to me, his knuckles singing as they reddened in the warmth. It's not romance, simply how things are. You, out there in the cold, seeing the seasons turning, me with my heart full of headlines, feeding words onto a blank screen. Is your life more real because you dig and sow? You wouldn't say so. Breaking ice on a water butt, clearing a path through snow. Still, it's you who sends me word of that other world, pouring air and light into an envelope. So that at night, watching the same news in different houses, our souls tap out messages across the icy miles. Now, remembering what we'd said about ways into a poem, first of all, you can look at the title. Now here, it's not just the first line repeated like some of the other poems. You've got this idea, um, letters from Yorkshire, and there are two concepts in that. First of all, the idea of letters, and secondly, the idea of Yorkshire. So taking letters, first of all, Nowadays, we tend to communicate electronically. So there's email, there's WhatsApp, there's text messages, Snapchat, etc. But um, there's something about a letter which means that it is a tangible connection. Okay, And tangible means that it can be touched, it can be held in your hands. You know that when you open that letter, the other person has had to hold the paper, the other person has had to touch it, to write it or to sign it. So it's something physical. And this is a poem about emotional and geographical distance. The idea that actually you're getting something that's slightly more old fashioned, maybe something more um, real, more tangible. And, and the poem examples, what, what is real? What's real about this connection? Um, so you've got that, that um, idea of a letter. Yorkshire, again, you've got those connotations of nature, natural, the idea of countryside. Better if you spell it correctly there. So straight away, there's an expectation of this is something um, tangible, this is a connection, this is someone taking the time out of their life to actually sit and write a letter. And it's coming from the natural world, it's coming from the countryside. So looking at the start of the poem, you've got first of all the idea of in February, digging his garden, planting potatoes. February here has got a different context um, than in maybe in previous poems or maybe just as winter. Here we're going to take it as a precursor, which is something that goes before, like a signal um, of spring. Okay, so this is February not as cold, emotionally closed down. This is February as, look, things are starting to move towards spring. Spring being symbolic of life and cycles. So what have you got happening in February? Well, we've got an unknown he that she's telling or the speaker is telling us about. And he is digging the garden and planting potatoes. Not only are they both natural actions relating to working with the land, but they are present participles. OK, so that's the type of speech. They are present participles. And they indicate that idea of constant cycles. Like he's working with the land, he's working within this pattern. You've also got the idea here of this consonant. So you've got the GG and the plosive PP that give you an idea of the nature of what he's doing, the, the type of job he's doing. Okay, so you've got the consonants and the plosives indicating the kind of force and the physicality that he's working with. 
And what happens while he's doing that, while he's actually preparing for the new season, he, and we still don't know who he is, he sees the first lapwings return. They're a type of bird, they migrate, and so seeing the birds come back at the start of the spring again heralds a new beginning, again heralds the start of a new cycle. They're being used as a symbol of cycles, things that are cyclical. This idea of seasons coming and going. He sees those and he came indoors to write to me. Okay, So the idea that actually he goes, he sees something significant and he wants to share it, shows that emotional connection. You've also got that cesura there, um, which marks that kind of movement from outside inside. It marks the kind of idea of this emotional connection. And what happens? He comes indoors to write to me, to our speaker, his knuckles singing, so that element of personification, as they reddened in the warmth. So this is a kind of physical reaction. Okay, it's it's positive, the, the connotations of the word singing. Um, his, on one level, his hand is, um, the blood's coming back into it, he's had cold hands, he's now back in the warmth, and you get that kind of buzzing feeling in your hands. But again, it's like he really wants to pick up the pen and write to her. His hand is kind of singing into the paper as he tells her what he's been doing and reddening in the warmth. Again, it's that idea of him being kind of enthusiastic about something. If not passion in terms of love, then at least passion in terms of um, enthusiasm for their friendship. And on that point, it's, it's an interesting poem because you don't know whether or not this speaker is talking about a lover um, or whether or not she's talking about a friend. So play it safe, acknowledge in your answers that it could be a lover or it could be a friend. But either way, there is this kind of physical reaction, this warming up as he starts to write to her. You know, there's this kind of delight in it. So when you get that idea of it's not romance, it's simply how things are, it's not romance, simply how things are, you can take that a couple of ways. You can take that, first of all, that she's saying... Yeah, it's fine. It's not overly romantic. It's not overly ideal. We're not being um, kind of childish about this. We're not being immature about it. We just accept this is our deal in life. It's not great. He lives there. I live here. Um, so romantic as in romanticised. I'm not, I'm not kind of making it out to be something it's not. It's simply how things are. This is how I live my life. This is the relationship I have. That's option one. Option two could be, generally, it is a platonic relationship. And if you, are if you have a platonic relationship with somebody, you are just friends. So it could be, it's not romance, it's simply how things are. It's like, I'm, I'm not in love with him. This is simply the basis of our friendship. The third option could also be that she's not romanticising what he's doing. That idea of, oh, I have this kind of idea of him working on the land and isn't it all lovely? Um, it's simply how things are. I'm, I'm realistic about things. And again, you've got that end stop there to kind of indicate the pragmatism. If you are pragmatic about something, it means you take a kind of common sense, no nonsense view about it. You don't over, you're not overly emotional about stuff. You take a practical view rather than an emotional view. Then we get the switch in address. It moves to direct address and she starts speaking to him and also to us, the reader, directly. So there's that confusion between who she's talking to. We, we're, we're at least eavesdropping on her talking to him. But you out there in the cold, seeing the seasons turning. So again, that idea of cycles again and nature. But cold being kind of maybe distant. You're going to link it later on to the idea of icy miles. But he's seeing the seasons turning and she has a heart full of headlines. Okay. So actually, her passion, her day-to-day -day enthusiasm is taken up not with things that are natural, but actually what's going on in the busy, hectic Western world out there. 
um, feeding words onto a blank screen. So whatever she's doing for her job really affects her. Um, it takes up her time, it takes up her emotions and it takes up her passion. There's maybe a sense of yearning, sort of longing for the life that he's got. Obviously the alliteration connects that phrase there, but look at the physical nature of it. Her heart is full of headlines. Um, should it be full of him? Um, the idea that she is feeding words onto a blank screen this idea of consumption so if you are consuming something the idea that she's feeding and feeding and feeding and it's never quite full this is a an insatiable appetite represented by modern life if you are insatiable it means you can't ever be satiated you can't ever be satisfied so the computer screen is going to be hungry, is going to demand more and more from her. Okay. Just one one thing, just notice that seeing the seasons turning, you've got the enjambment there, reflecting the kind of change from one season into another as the stanza changes. So that's a nice little point where you've got the form echoing the meaning, seasons turning, the enjambment is going into the next line. So these words are being fed onto a blank screen and she asks both him and herself, is your life more real because you dig and sow? And that's that idea of planting, sowing seeds. Is his life more valuable? Is his existence more meaningful because he works with the land? It's putting modern life and the busyness and the electronic nature and instant communication, um, contrasting it against the idea of going back to nature, living a slower paced life, being able to work with the earth. So she puts an answer kind of in his mouth, if you like, is your life more real because you dig or so? The question is, is kind of operating on a number of different levels to her and to him, but she says you wouldn't say so. And just proving that she's not romanticising the lifestyle, you know, what's what's overly ideal what's the perfect life if you're breaking ice on a water butt and clearing a path through snow so actually you are you know living a, a hard physical life it's interesting though that actually if you look at the ice imagery the cold imagery through the poem he is in the cold but he warms up okay so the first and second stanza he um, comes into the warmth out from the cold. He breaks the ice. He clears the path through snow. So he is the one who in his reality is almost making the connections. He is enabling things to warm up, things to live. A water butt is one of those great big um, water holding buckets thing. It collects rainwater and actually you need to be able to break the ice on it to access the water in it because it's got an open top because it has to collect um, rainwater. Um, but if you take that idea of, of following the warmth and cold imagery through, he is the person who's making things happen. That becomes important because later on we have icy miles. And this letter from Yorkshire is another way of him defrosting things, if you like, warming things up, maintaining that contact. There's icy miles, but there's that connection between them. So he does the breaking ice, he does the clearing the path, both literally and arguably metaphorically, by contacting her. So it's you, so still it's you. And that line break is really interesting because that could be one of those lines that if you take it by itself, you get a different message from still it's you to still it's you who sends me word of that other world. And they're both ideas of connection. You know, she hasn't lost him. It is still him. He is still the important one, be it a friendship or a romance. And then the whole line, still it's you who sends me word of that other world. And you've got that kind of... Um, internal rhyme, he creates the connection. I 
that internal rhyme gets that connection word world. Um, pouring air and light into an envelope. So that metaphor gives you the idea of how she sees his letters. She is sitting in front of this hungry screen, feeding words constantly, her heart full, and she receives air and light from him, this connection from this beautiful natural world. And that means so that at night, watching the same news in different houses, our souls tap out messages across the icy miles. So actually it's that it's a modern version of the idea that, you know, wherever you are in the world, you know that the person you're thinking of is looking at the same moon or the same sun or is, is you know, admittedly not at the same time if you're in Australia, but you know what I mean. Um, it's that connection. So this is a modern version of it. We watch the same news in different houses. We know we're watching the same channel. Um, so the despite the geographical distance, the emotional distance is being bridged. There's that final religious illusion in terms of our souls. You've got that pronoun changes. It's been I, we, you. Now it's our. Um, and they tap out messages across the icy miles. That's got, again, that old-fashioned communication sign. Um, it could also, is a modern communication in terms of keyboards and, and phones and things. But one way or another, the poem ends on a feeling of connection both emotionally and um, in terms of communication. So looking at the form and structure then, what can you say about it? Well, it's free verse. And as such, it mimics natural speech. It's written in tercets. And that unevenness, or the, the kind of, um, not uneven because they're all three lines, but that idea of odd numbers, it's, it's not a couple, um, could connect the disjointed nature of their relationship. It has a flow to it created by the enjambment between the lines and the stanzas that could mimic the natures and the seasons. The pronouns show the development of the relationship, um, so you move into the hour. You could connect it with um, a follower in terms of natural imagery. You could connect it with Sonnet 29 in terms of natural imagery and, and feelings, intense feelings. You could look at it in terms of winter swans. Both poems end on, not, not both ending on reconciliation, but both ending on a note of togetherness, um, coming together of two people. Um, it says it's not a sentimental poem, not a romantic poem. There's a lot of monosyllables that could show its matter-of-fact um, nature. I think there's... Um, something to be said for picking up definitely on the use of that question and the effect of it and just really to see if you're using it what what you can link it to um it's a, it's once you get your head around it it's quite a simple poem in terms of what it's the the, uh, the vocabulary it's using so drill down into the different um images in it i think that idea of warmth and ice and him clearing things is is probably a more sophisticated one. Um, so let's see if you can get your heads around that. Okay, hopefully that's helped. Don't forget there are other ways of filling out your notes and getting other people's voices on the poems. So I'd recommend looking at the notes online, looking at Mr Bruff, and seeing what you can add to that, as well as your own ideas. Um, you, had, you had a go at this at one point. Right. Okay, bye now.